the worst imaginable thing happening to your own child. That's how she went out. I saw a flame by the vehicle. Lighter fluid was concentrated on her hands and face. It's going to track it back to the place that had the car. The vehicle was never reported stolen. Who took it off the lot? It didn't just drive off the lot because you never reported it stolen. This is True Crime Arizona, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. The man on the phone is named Robert Miller. He identifies himself on the 911 call as he's passing through Tonopah, Arizona on April 17th, 2023. What Robert thought he was looking at was just a car fire. They happen more often than you'd think on Phoenix area freeways. That stretch of the I-10 is kind of the middle of nowhere. It's the route people drive from Arizona to get to Los Angeles. Robert Miller made that call, then continued on his way. The Department of Public Safety arrived at the scene, but they quickly made a call to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, an agency that doesn't typically deal with freeway car fires. And it was reported that the flames were coming from inside the vehicle by the person that drove past it. Um, And there appears to be a dead person in the vehicle. A dead person on fire inside the car. This unknowingly was the beginning of a murder mystery that months later would be known around the world. I'm gonna tell you it's every emotion that you could possibly have, except for happiness. Every time we watch or see new information about her, it's like the same day she died, over and over and over again. Because it puts us right back to the very beginning. But at the same time, it gives us a little bit of hope that someone's gonna recognize something something's going to come forward, or someone's going to come forward. That's Erica Pillsbury, mother of 22-year-old Mercedes Vega. I was FaceTiming with her and her husband, Tom, from their hotel room in Hawaii. I'll explain why that's important in a little bit. Many of our listeners know about the Mercedes Vega murder case. We released our first podcast episode on it with all the details we knew in November of 2023. You can go listen to it if you haven't already to learn even more about Mercedes and how we got here. This episode is to analyze the new information we recently got from an incident report. But let's start with the basic facts of the case. On April 16th, 2023, 22-year-old Mercedes Vega was last seen alive on surveillance footage in the parking garage of the Aubrey Apartments in Tempe, where she lived. She was wearing casual clothes and looked relaxed, assumably going to get in her car. The sheriff's office said she originally was going to meet friends for dinner, but abruptly changed her plans to go to work. Mercedes was an exotic dancer at a local club a couple nights a week while working to become a personal trainer. But she never made it to work that night. The next day, April 17th, those 911 calls come in for the car fire and a body is found inside. Officials identify that body as Mercedes Vega a completely shocking and devastating discovery to her family and friends. Eventually, the autopsy report reveals how Mercedes died, and it's hard to imagine who could do this because it was torture. Mercedes was shot in the arm, had trauma to her head, and had bleach in her throat. The medical examiner believes she was alive when the car fire started 
and burned alive. The lighter fluid was concentrated on her hands and her face. It was the worst way in the world to die. The worst imaginable thing that you could ever imagine happening to yourself and even worse to your own child. That's how she went out. For more than a year now, Mercedes' family and friends have fought for answers and justice. On the year anniversary of her death, they gathered in downtown Phoenix and marched to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office headquarters, calling for the agency to do more and solve this horrific crime. We know multiple agencies are now involved in the investigation. For the first time since we started reporting on Mercedes' case, there hasn't been much new information released as it's an open and active investigation. But now we have the incident report from the day of the car fire and the 911 calls that do explain a little more about what people saw that day on the I-10. The 911 caller, Robert Miller, was simply passing through, but there's something important he says during the 911 call that gives a new piece of crucial information. He said there's people outside the vehicle? I believe I saw at least one person outside, yeah. He believed he saw one person outside the car. That person would have to know what happened to Mercedes, possibly the person who killed her getting that information out there that they were seen is important. The question then becomes, where did that person go after? That person didn't walk away from that burning vehicle. There's a vehicle somewhere. But I wonder how quickly a car did pull up. I mean, people are like, oh, those people must be helping them. We don't need to call 911. It's likely another car would have either already been there or right behind them then waited along a turnaround area nearby. So starting with trying to figure out who the 911 caller saw is important. It could be the start of the snowball. We also learned the exact car Mercedes Vega was found in, and it was not her car. Her own car was found abandoned at the culinary dropout in Tempe. We know authorities have video of her car arriving there, not by her, but that's all we know. They haven't released more details. The incident report from the car fire reveals she was found in a white 2018 Chevy Malibu. The VIN number and salvage title come back to a woman named Marissa Case. We tracked her down and her family said she hadn't seen that car for a while after getting in an accident and her insurance deeming it totaled. They say they all last saw that car after it was damaged and being towed away to an unknown place. That makes sense, but makes it harder to trace back who got it and from where. Tom Pillsbury feels this is the biggest piece of information we've learned thus far. That car is the link. I, I do believe that. And I've said that to the detective. It is the link. Because that's going to link to somebody. I do believe it's going to track it back to the place that had the car. Who took that car from that place? There's got to be some record. The vehicle was never reported stolen. Who took it off the lot? It didn't just drive off the lot because you never reported it stolen. The reality, though, is while this does give a specific car description, it's more than a year since the murder happened. The concerning part of it is, is that video footage isn't always saved for very long, just like 72 hours at the Aubrey. So you're not gonna be able to go to a gas station and go, oh, a year and a month ago, can I, you know, can I get that footage of who got gas here? Memories fade and people move on with their lives. This is where I believe the police really messed up is because if they had done their due diligence in the beginning, this could have been solved a year ago. This information could have helped a long time ago. Learning more things about 
the body cam from. I don't want to see that. I, I don't need to see. I already know what happened to my child and my daughter, and, and, and I don't need to see that. Um, my wife may think differently, but me personally, it, it just angers me more that you're releasing this now after a year when if you were to release this six months ago, um, we may not be sitting here right now. That part really angers the Pillsburys. Why wasn't any of this released sooner? In the same breath, they're also thankful. New information is hopefully one step closer towards solving Mercedes' case, and it keeps her name in the media and top of mind. So many people around the world are now invested in this case, following updates from her family, friends, and the news on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. The sheriff's office has remained tight-lipped about this case in general, telling us they can't release more because it would compromise the investigation. The Pillsburys went out to where the car fire happened. They know it's where Mercedes took her last breaths after going through what can only be described as hell. When we drove out to where the car was, it was the hardest thing we ever did. I was sweating bullets, we were crying, and we were doing all this stuff, and then we went out there and we did a small ceremony for her. But as we drove back, we felt peace. Like, we, we were like, okay, Mercedes, you don't have to be here. We're here, we got you. And it's like this, we got you, and we're gonna take care of you. Mercedes came here on her 22nd birthday a year and almost a month ago. Mercedes had only been 22 years old just a few weeks before she was killed. Her mom is talking about Hawaii a place that meant a lot to their family. The Pillsburys are a blended family with kids, but Tom and Erica had been able to take Mercedes to Hawaii with just the three of them. I remembered things like where we took our first sunset, it's the three of us. I remember the bar that she sang the national anthem. I remember walking on this specific beach. I remember going to this hotel. She's bringing up these memories that made her happy. So when she went back for her 22nd birthday, it was her first time going there on her own. She was so excited to tell her mom about it. When she came back, she called me. She said, Mom, my soul belongs in Hawaii. I am in my element. She said, just the birds and the flowers and the environment and the ocean and we'd been here with her before and the funny thing is that she went back to a lot of the places we'd taken her to um you know hiking diamond head and dukes and and snorkeling and she even went out on the same boat in the same place that we did when she was seven she also told her mom something else something that now gives everyone the chills. That's where my soul belongs. And when I die, I want my kids to spread my ashes in Hawaii. That was three weeks prior to her death. Of course, at the time, Erica and Tom didn't think anything more of it. But now, equipped with that knowledge, they knew they had to follow through with her wishes. They'd like to be farther along in the case and feel tangibly closer to justice for their daughter, but they also feel it's time to let her go. It was really hard getting on the plane. We had a hard time doing that. But once we got here, we have felt a little bit of peace. Like we're supposed to be here. Like we, we feel, feel her. her. Yeah, we feel her here. <laughs> Over FaceTime, they showed me the beautiful wood canisters that held her ashes. The canisters had angel wings that matched the design of the tattoo Tom got on his arm for Mercedes after her death. They were going to a private area on the island where they would have their own small ceremony and set her free in the ocean. 
there wasn't a dry eye over FaceTime when they described this to me. We're gonna set her afloat. And I don't know, it's gonna be hard to put her in that and, and just say goodbye and I'll see you soon. But I know that's what she wanted. Every time I have talked to the Pillsburys, it's been so heavy. The unimaginable pain they've been through and continue to go through is enough to break anyone. Yet they've persevered, even in the face of new information being released, where they have to revisit what happened to Mercedes over and over. But this interview, there was something a little different. I watched Erica smile several times for the first time since this all began. I watched the two of them share memories of Mercedes in Hawaii and smile at each other. It was beautiful. And they say, this is the reason why. We're supposed to be here. Like we, we feel, feel her. her. Yeah, we feel her. We expect to get body camera footage of the car fire incident in the near future from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. We also have requested the entire police report on the investigation, but are told that can't be released yet or isn't ready yet. We hope to get all of this soon. If you have any information on the murder of Mercedes Vega, please call the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. True Crime Arizona, the podcast, is hosted by me, Brianna Whitney, and produced by Sergio Hernandez. It's a production of Arizona's Family, 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona. This is True Crime Arizona, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. 